Welcome everyone to the uh, neighborhood grant workshop on arts. Uh, we have with us today uh, people from our neighborhood services office, as well as Rebecca Rothman from the public arts area. Uh, Elizabeth Thomas will be uh, running the workshop and the PowerPoint today. Uh, I will let everyone introduce themselves. Elizabeth, go forward. Thank you. That's my esteemed colleague, Laura Kaifas. She is a neighborhood services specialist, as am I. I'm Elizabeth Thomas. Many of you might know me from my initials ET. We're also joined by Rebecca Rothman, and we'll have her provide her title when we turn over that section. And I believe we're also joined by Brenda Clark, who also is a neighborhood services specialist, in addition to Krista Lawless, and Shauna Warner is our Neighborhood Services Manager. Um, today's session is about the Marianne Quarter Neighborhood Grants. This is our workshop specific to arts projects. Just wanted to advise all of you that we are recording today's session. This is for the purposes of being able to put it on the Neighborhood Grants website later so that more would be grant applicants can watch it at their leisure or if any of you want to revisit it after today. In addition, we have had um, several other sessions already. One was specific to um, HOAs and so that one is living on the website. We also had one specific to traffic calming. Another was about landscape and environmental projects. And we have a remaining session that's going to be about parks projects that will be on Monday, um, starting at 1130 and also on the WebEx platform. Thank you for joining us today and we're going to go ahead and get going. So we'll move on to slide number 2, the Marianne quarter neighborhood grant program. The um, goal of this program is to provide residents with an opportunity for them to come together to improve their neighborhoods. Um, it requires resident participation that's at the beginning and throughout the process and neighborhood involvement in the selection, coordination, and completion of grant projects. It's also important to note that the grant request must be a capital improvement. It cannot be for routine maintenance or operations. Now we get into the funding. Since 1994, we've had 660 projects completed and over $4.8 million invested. Um, to call your attention to a couple new things this grant cycle, there's 350,000 available in funding. There might be some additional available specific to projects that are water conservation projects. Um, also new this cycle and pretty exciting is the maximum grant amount is now $20,000 for this grant cycle. Um, a match of at least 25% of the requested funds is still required for HOAs and also for our certified crime-free multi-housing communities. Many of them make additional matches well beyond that, but a match of at least 25% is required. Who can apply? This is an important slide in terms of the Neighborhood Services has over 82 volunteer associations registered with our office. In addition, we have 139 homeowners associations registered with the Neighborhood Services office. If you happen to be a homeowners association in particular, and you're not certain that you are indeed registered, you can email neighborhoods at tempe.gov and we can verify that for you. Um, it is a requirement for eligibility. Um, another thing is you have to include and basically to invite everyone in your neighborhood or community to get involved. Um, you want to get input from all residents again early on and throughout the process. You do not want your grant application to be just a board decision or for officers of the Voluntary Neighborhood Association or HOA to be making the decision. What can you apply for? A capital project that benefits the entire neighborhood and is a one-time expenditure. 
It also must be completed, must be doable by June 30th, 2022. Almost as important sometimes as what you can't apply for. HOA requests cannot be for maintenance projects such as entryway gates, roofing repairs, common ground and pool maintenance, painting, specific to painting, it can't just be um, putting another coat of paint on or the same color on. If you have a wall project and it, um, it would definitely need to read as an enhancement or improvement project to be considered. Also not applicable is a road repair for private streets. Um, you also cannot apply for project maintenance or operation costs. Who do I involve? Again, the community involvement early on and throughout the project process is required. All residents of the community have to be notified of the opportunity to apply for a grant. Um, they also have to be provided a chance to propose and comment on any project ideas, and you want to include them in the final selection of the project. Um, I made a couple quick notes for myself, but I just wanted to emphasize um, you can use postcards um, and voluntary neighborhood associations can work with neighborhood services on that. Um, you also, if you're a homeowners association on your own, could do postcards or newsletters. Um, virtual meetings are going to be very much encouraged so that you're inclusive in the grant pro process. And other um, avenues of communication, such as Nextdoor, can be used to enhance Facebook posts or flyers are just a few ideas. And now I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca Rothman. She'll provide her title and she'll go through the next slides. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, all. Um, I'm Rebecca. I'm the director of public art here in Tempe, part of Tempe Arts and Culture and really happy to be able to work with neighborhood services and residents on these projects. Um, they are gems within the collection and something that people don't realize is that they are really unusual in that um, these works of art come together through kind of the grassroots efforts of residents and with our help and guidance and facilitation, our being those of us in the city, um, it really lands on the homeowners associations and neighborhood associations to make them into a reality. Uh, once they're complete, then if they're on city property, they become part of the public art collection. Um, that's again, if they're on city property, and I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, we're, we're thrilled with what the projects have been thus far. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, we're really well known for having these fabulous sandpipes all over Tempe, and I, I hear that from other cities valley-wide, like, how do you guys do that? And then I have to say, you know what? Our residents apply to do this through the Marion Quarter Grant, and then we help them. Um, most of the time, the standpipes are created through tile, but as you can see with this piece by Jake Early in Daly Park, some other options are available. Um, the piece by Joan Barron and Ali um, Mar Morales are also include metal with the tile. And these are uh, pretty unique pieces because they're they're utilitarian. They have to be there. There's some rules that these artists have to follow, but they manage to make them into landmarks throughout the neighborhoods. And everyone knows when they're in Broadmoor or Clark Park or Maple Ash, et cetera, et cetera, by these uh, standpipes, or that's at least what I hear about. Next slide. Um, but it doesn't have to be a standpipe. That's the other question I get asked is like, oh, you guys just all, all the neighborhood projects are standpipes. That's not really true. Um, you can see at Clark Park, there is the community garden piece by Tom Stritch. Um, Greg Richard did this lovely bench. We have benches by other artists around. So it's really up to the applicants to think outside the box and to think about where art could enhance their neighborhood. Next slide. We're open to working with uh, residents and helping to determine a good location. Uh, we do have some rules though. 
the first being, as I mentioned, when the artwork is on city owned property, it becomes part of the public art collection and we take care of it. Therefore, if you're looking at a location that's in city right away or on um, property, then we ask that you select artists from our pre qualified list. This is a list of over 50 artists. It's available on our website. Um, these artists have been vetted by residents and staff alike. Um, they are really excited to work with residents and do these kinds of projects. And you'll find that in the list, it's broken up based on medium. Um, if you happen to have artists in your neighborhood who are like, well, how do I get on that list? We open up this as a call for work every two to three years, depending on our availability and we update it as such. So it does update regularly. Um, when you're applying for an artwork, we ask that you select three artists and show proof of um, reaching out to them and getting some bid or information from them in your application. The art staff will help and facilitate the contract once the neighborhood has selected an artist to work on. And again, if it's on city property, we'll maintain it. And the reason that this is important is throughout the design process, we're gonna help with materials, making sure that these have some longevity, that these are pieces that are properly located, that we can maintain them, that they're gonna look as good 10 years from now as they do the day you put them in. Um, again, going back to that list, the reason that we have this pre-qualified list is to make sure that the artists who are represented on the list are not only interested, but also very capable of working in a public art setting. Um, we will review the materials that are proposed and the fabrication and installation methods. If there's any kind of question that might impact other departments, for example, the piece you're looking at with Andrew Carson is pretty tall. Um, in that case, we would want somebody from planning to look it over, make sure that the engineering is in place so that it's not going to fall over in a windstorm, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll work on those kind of technical things with residents to make these happen. Next slide. If you are in an HOA, um, HOAs are privately owned, so that allows you to pick any artist you like. Uh, you may use the pre-qualified list, but you're not, you don't have to. Um, a lot of residents ask me about walls, particularly alleyway walls as an option. It's important to note that those are privately owned, even if they're not in an HOA. A uh, good example right here with John Randall Nelson, these are privately owned walls um, at Date Palm Manor. So what that means is that when the artwork is done, we will still help with materials. We'll still help navigate and facilitate. We still help by writing the contract. But at the end of the project, it's residents that take care of it and maintain it. We will not maintain these pieces that are on, proper, are on a privately owned property. So again, questions about materials we can review and discuss and talk about their longevity and our knowledge base, but um, the neighborhood would have to figure out a way to make sure that these are cared for in the duration. Next slide. So here comes the big, the big ugly question that I get asked. Um, it's important that as you're considering a location, if you have any questions especially, but even still to reach out to us and let us know what you're thinking about um, we have artworks that are out in the world and get hit by cars, people climb on them, things happen. So we know a lot about what it takes to have a work of art that has longevity. And we take risks, we do new things all the time in public art. Um, but when you consider your location, please also consider what's around it. I get asked a lot about medians, about bump outs about artworks in the middle of the road. And while these look really, really lovely, um, they get hit by cars just like everything else. So if you have a project that is in a median, is in a roundabout, is near a roadway, please um, give us a call. We will take a look at it with you. Um, and just know that what we're looking for is a certain amount of buffer between the artwork and the vehicular traffic. If it's not there, we simply don't advise that you move forward with that because it's not maintainable. Next slide. 
So um, with neighborhood art, I would say that the best way to start is to consider the site and how it would be enhanced by the artwork. Um, is it accessible to the public? Does it have a visual impact? And will the artwork add a new way of looking at the site? Um, we, of course, love artwork. We want to see it all over Tempe, but it also serves a pretty distinctive purpose in that artwork should go beyond decorating a site. It should create a landmark. It should create some kind of an icon, or it should create something that has an actual relationship to the area. Therefore, um, if you call us and we come and take a look at it and we give you feedback, we're giving you our honest feedback. Um, but think about it in terms of your application too, so that we know what it is that you're trying to do with the artwork and what the purpose it serves is. We're happy to review with you. We're happy to talk through anytime. Next slide. All righty. Um, thank you so much, Rebecca. I think we're going to pull you back in after a few more slides. Okay. Um, I did want to touch on the last point that Rebecca made, though. When they do sit with you or meet with you, whether it's in person or virtually at, um, or on, they have a lot of good information to share. And so please take note of any concerns or any issues that they bring up. Um, they are the experts, if you will, um, as it relates to art projects, and that will help strengthen your application. Now we're getting into what do I submit? And this is more general information, whether it's an art project or a different type of project, but every project is gonna need an application form. New this cycle, meaning for the 2021-2022 grants, we do have an online application form. Um, the basic application form is going to be as it always is. It will need um, you to complete who's the primary contact, who's the authorizing official, if different from the primary contact. Be sure to give us good emails and good cell phone numbers or other numbers to reach you. Um, funny we have to say that, but that's very important for the future communication about your grant project. Um, as far as um, the following, these also apply to all project types. We request three bids, or in the case of an art project, three artist proposals. In addition, pictures, aerials from Google of where the art will go, so kind of an existing conditions situation. Also need plans, or in this case, artist renderings. And very important is that proof of community involvement for any application that you submit. So you're going to want to have documentation of postcards or flyers or meetings or meeting agendas. Um, one thing I should add, too, is we don't want a novel when you submit, but we very much need you to be specific um, and as brief as possible when you're doing your narrative, but it's basically telling the story of your grant. You won't be there to pitch it yourself, so the more information that you can provide that is indeed specific um, will help paint the picture or the story of your request. Also, specific mandatory requirements for each project type are applicable. We have what we call cheat sheets for each of the major categories. So in addition to the workshop today and the PDF of this PowerPoint, if you would take the time to look at those cheat sheets, cheat sheets, I think it would strengthen your application and each of those brings out important specifics for that type of grant project that'll be helpful for you. Did you have something to add, Rebecca? I do. I just wanted to add in terms of artist renderings or proposals, we're not looking for a full blown proposal at the point of application simply because you're asking an artist um, for their thoughts, their initial thoughts and what they you know, are interested in and in trying to get a cost from them, trying to get some random idea. But if um, they're not under contract yet, so it just will strengthen your case if we have an idea of who the artist is that you're talking to and what they would provide, I would say, whether that's, you know, a pencil sketch or a narrative or some 
some information that just kind of lays out what what they're thinking helps. Thank you so much for the clarification and the arts is kind of a very special and unique category. So that's very good input for what you need to be asking of your artist. Um, what is evaluated? There's these three major headings here. We've got quality, impact, and ability. And quality is just that you have a clear and detailed application that you're showing that documentation of engaging the neighborhood early on and throughout the process, a complete application so that everything is there, all the fields are completed. Also that your budget is specific and accurate. On some of the other grant project types, your um, ask amount should match one of the um, one of the bids that you're providing. Um, you also, if you're an HOA, you're going to need to break out that 25% matching funds requirement. Um, as far as it relates to ability, that's more just that you're confirming your ability to complete the project during the fiscal year that you'll be provided. And obviously you want to work with contractors that are assuring you of their ability to do so. Um, you also want to address how the project will be maintained in the future. As Rebecca was talking about and very specific to arts projects, if they're in the city right of way and if they are successful, the city will um, handle the maintenance on those. For the other project types, it's often the responsibility of the applicant that you are going to be taking on that maintenance. So you need to be able to describe in the application how you're going to do so. And that also relates to HOAs that are doing art projects. And we hope more do them. Um, as far as impact, um, that's another thing you can highlight in your application if it's applicable to your project. So if you're having anything to do with water or energy conservation or you're adding trees and thereby shading sidewalks and so on, you should call that out and highlight that in your application. Um, enhancement and beautification are important for any um, grant project application. You can also emphasize improving health and safety. Let's say if you're adding some additional lighting or security lighting. Um, and if there's a known neighborhood deficiency that you're addressing, that's another thing to call out. And if there are existing projects, whether city or private, that your grant project is going to enhance or further build on that something else you can include. Oh, timeline, let's see. Um, as far as connecting with neighbors and making project selections and starting those conversations, that can begin now. Um, and when we say now, we're obviously in December and quickly approaching holidays, but basically sooner than later. Contact applicable staff. That's not just the neighborhood services staff, and we will certainly be at the ready and want to help you with your basic grant questions. But if you have a specific project type that you're pursuing, you're going to want to start doing the outreach for those specific staff members. All that information will be provided on the website and we'll have Rebecca's email at the end of today's presentation. You're also going to now want to start soliciting proposals. It takes a little bit of time, obviously, to hear back from contractors or in this case artists. So the sooner you start that process, the sooner that you'll be able to get some bids or some proposals in. Um, preliminary reviews of applications take place between the months of February and into April. The grant deadline that we have bolded there, that's a hard, fast deadline. We're looking at April 27, 2021 by 5 p.m. And earlier applications are always accepted and appreciated. Um, the neighborhood grant panel conducts their review. That date will be determined, but that doesn't take place till May or June of next year. And from that review, recommendations are prepared, which go on to city council. They then look at those in late summer and your projects, all projects would need to be completed by June 30th, 2022, if you were successful with your grant application. So this gets a little bit more into a visual view of what you need to do before submitting your grant application. 
Um, step one would be attend the arts grant workshop. Thank you for those of you who made time to do so today. So you're already on the way. And then also between now and February and March would be when you would start talking with the neighbors and brainstorming the project. Also between now and February and March, that's when you're gonna reach out to neighborhood services staff as well the informing of your intent to apply and perhaps the project type you're pursuing. And then you would also wanna reach out to Rebecca in public art if you're gonna pursue an arts project. That's also between February and March when you're going to solicit artists for preliminary ideas and proposals. This is continuation of submitting your grant application. February and March is also the timing for the second meeting with the neighbors. Um, neighborhood services can work with you um, if you need help as far as that and virtual platforms and help get the word out and so on. Um, at the second meeting, you can discuss the progress of the grant. If it's an art project, you're going to want to make artist selection, narrow that down, and also make any necessary decisions and have some discussions about how your association is going to divide up the work. Um, February and March, you'll be working on your grant application. And then it looks like per this box, if you can submit, a week prior, that would be April 20th, 2021. That would be great to neighborhood services is where your submission needs to go. And then it will be reviewed for completeness. And again, the earlier applications are appreciated because we get a number of them in and many um, to do preliminary review on. April 27th, 2020, again, is the hard and fast deadline by 5 p.m. So after submitting your grant application in May, the staff committee, that's when the review happens in May or June, and it will be July or August when council will look at the recommendations and make decisions. In August, all applicants, whether they are successful and get a yes letter, or for those who don't and get a no letter, will receive it in writing. You'll get a letter. And the yes letters will have your additional instructions. It should note if there are permits required. It should note your next steps and who is your neighborhood services contact um, for the grant moving forward. Um, the no's, um, we try to include some information for those applicants as well. Sometimes it's um, a good project idea, but perhaps was lacking some important information in the original application, um, it might be one that could be resubmitted for a future grant cycle with some additional retooling. So we try to give you enough information and then that's applicable. August and September, once any necessary permits are secured, city staff will notify you and artists to go ahead and start proceeding with project. Um, please wait till you are given that approval. August and September, that's when the artist, if desired, can react, can react, can request the first half of the funding. Um, we need an invoice submitted to neighborhood services in order to process that. And if it could include any materials or any services um, and who the artist is, obviously, and all their contact information. The second half of the funding cannot be paid until successful project completion and successful inspection by our folks over in arts. So after the grant is awarded September through June, that's when your project is going to be constructed. All work is going to have to be completed by June 30th. Once your project is completed, you will need to schedule that inspection of the project with Rebecca. After Rebecca has the opportunity or her staff to have a look at it, they will notify neighborhood services with the results and you will be notified with the results. If there's any remaining punch list items or issues that need to be addressed, those will be noted. And following that, you can submit that final invoice and maybe even have a celebration of your grant project at the site if applicable. Um, this one, I'm going to let Rebecca take over and talk a little bit more about the offerings on their website. Sure, thanks. 
Um, so you can see the three of us, it's myself and then Sophia and Christine work in the public art uh, program with me. Um, you, your best bet to find out what's going on is to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We update that regularly um, at Tempe City Arts, and that includes our arts engagement team. And we often will shout out for other arts organizations that are doing things in Tempe just to keep everyone aware. Um, another great way to find out what we're doing is to look at our website at tempe.gov forward slash public art. There you'll find our walking maps for public art throughout Tempe, as well as the interactive GIS map. Um, we have calls for artists and we have all kinds of information, including information about the neighborhood projects. Um, and finally, I just want to say in these times when we're all practicing our physical distancing and kind of quarantining or hunkering in and isolating, it's wonderful that in Tempe, you can take a walk and have an art experience. So get outside, take a look at our walking maps. Um, they're available on our website. That's good advice, Rebecca. So we've got Rebecca's email up for you. And we also have the neighborhood services email here, neighborhoods at Tempe.gov. And Rebecca's is Rebecca underscore Rothman at Tempe.gov. So those are also going to be on the website um, posted for you if you want to look further into pursuing an art project. And lastly, my esteemed colleague Laura Kaifas is going to help us with any questions that anyone may have. Um, and neighborhoods at Tempe.gov again is the email and also the resting place for neighborhood grant information. It's very robust this year, and we hope it will help you with um, compiling your applications is tempe.gov forward slash neighborhood grants. So I'm going to get this PowerPoint off. Thanks, Elizabeth and Rebecca. I think you guys did a great job with that. I uh, don't see any questions. Oh, wait, maybe we did have some. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I'm having a hard time getting it to pull up. It was so amazing. There's no question. <laughs> <laughs> we just took it all. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's just doing a weird thing. It happens. Um, well, we have two people joining us, so I'm going to unmute you both. And if you want to ask a question, we'll start with Anne. Go ahead. Oh, I don't. I don't know. How many I asked them all at the other. You know. Okay. Things. That, I mean, we might have something that involves art and landscape. You know, sometime. You know, I keep mentioning that little section of the alley that's not. You know, the trucks don't go there, you know, across from Sala Park that has the fence on it. Mm -hmm. Putting maybe some benches and some um, maybe artistic benches and and um, something on that fence that that, you know, hides all the weeds that are in the middle of the alley be, behind, yeah. you know, but. Yeah. That's the that's the only potential art thing. I mean, we're we're thinking about. I mean, our neighborhoods are talking about that space, you know, and doing some tree stuff and then the traffic stuff, you know. So, okay, well, we appreciate that. And if you in the future think of something, we will uh, have you connect with Rebecca. Yeah, I might. I mean, that would be public space in that case. Unlike the other space that we did, that's school space you know so great okay. but <clears throat> i don't know is there has anybody done uh art at at parks i mean permanent art you know not the arts in the park but yes yeah actually um uh, there's been a number of pieces in parks and in that case if there's an art piece that you're interested in it would be me and dave mcclure you'd want to talk to so we can okay. Yeah. Because I mean, you've had totem poles even and okay. uh, artist benches and some yep. cool stuff out there. Yeah, because 
be around the gardens. That could someday be an art project at Sella Park. But I had talked about maybe doing some muraling or something on the bathroom, <laughs> you know, but but Dave McClure wasn't too keen on that when I talked with them, you know. But mm -hmm. I got the impression they really hadn't done much art at the park. So when I was talking with them, that was like two years ago, though. So that's why I kind of wondered about whether anything had been done at parks. We we have we work really closely with Dave and the parks team. Um, but again, every project has its own specific right. needs. Right. And so it could have just been that the project that you were proposing or interested in wasn't right for that site for whatever reason. And that's why, again, we we really ask that you reach out to us before. We don't want you to put a ton of work in and then find out that it's not a good fit. Just no, reach out to us and we'll talk you through it. It was something I just uh, threw out there as a thought for something to do. But uh, the other thing is that I, I know a couple of years ago they were talking about redoing the signs for the entryways to each of the parks with the standardized park sign. But I don't know, is that something that I, because we had asked about maybe doing that as a grant thing to change the, the sign, you know, and they said, well, we're going to try and come up with a standard. But when they do that, is that something the art department? That, that would actually, you'd want to talk to parks first on that because that's a, a monument sign for the park. Right. Um, and the other thing about signage and working with an artist, artists can enhance a monument sign but that's signage right. is still signage it's not artwork and that's important to note the difference um, so well, when you get into signage you're you're talking about not only in this case parks but also planning and having making sure that they're okay with it yeah no i, I mean what we had thought is it's cracking you know and, and actually i love the signs that are out at all the parks you know the existing signs they're they're kind of part of like the feel of tempe you know, they're all the same, but a lot of them are cracking. So they, I think they had been looking at them. And so I had thought, you know, maybe there was a possibility to, you know, fix the cracks, but make it kind of arty, <laughs> you know, on the existing one. Um, friendly reminder, and on Monday, we're going to have the parks um, grant yeah, workshop. Yeah. And that one actually starts at 1130, but also on the WebEx platform. Yeah, and I... I, I logged in early today. I thought I was late because I think I got confused with the Monday session. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, we probably won't do anything in the park this year unless uh, Lisa wants to try to add more exercise equipment because she didn't get everything she wanted at the park, you know, when, with the grant because it, it was, you know, so, so I don't that's, okay. The only thing we might be thinking of, I think, but you never know. We might come up with some idea if if something else doesn't work out that we're already talking about. So, all right. Does uh, anyone else have any questions? Otherwise, I think we probably should close it out for today. <laughs> One last call. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone, including both Et and Rebecca. Thanks, guys. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Bye Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Great job, Laura. Thank you.